Yo, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Zay Cartier, man. We back in the studio, presented by Mix One Essentials, man. I got a special, special guest with me today. How you doing, brother? I'm good, man. What's up, y'all? What's, what's up, up, man? I'm Vince people. Serrano. You already yeah. know what time it is. Glad to be here, bro. I appreciate you coming, man. I appreciate you working on my schedule, too, man. I know I'd be... Oh, yeah. When you when you were shaking the movie, you already know. You got to be you gotta be flexible. This shit crazy, <laughs> man. <laughs> it's all good, though, bro. We here. We out here. For sure. So how you doing today, bro? Dog. Uh, amazing, man. I was just with my dog, Knowledge. We got a couple of rollouts, you know, doing some stuff out there. So just working, bro. Making okay. it happen. Yes, sir. Okay, who's Knowledge? What he do? Um, I don't know if y'all know who, uh, like, the Bronx wine era. Are you familiar with that? I'm from the Bronx, yeah. Okay, so, yeah. So, like, the Bronx wine era, um, Knowledge has a song called Husband and Wife with French Montana. Okay. Um, and he's an engineer. I've known him since before that because uh, when he was – coming up we was working i had met him he was in clearwater okay and um he actually got me to start rapping uh because i was just out in the streets just doing your thing doing my thing and then like he he was like i i met him on the beach because my boy was like yo you could freestyle you need to stop wasting your talent mm -hmm. and i met him on the beach i met this dude that he was actually mixing for and recording for his name was manifest mm. manifest destiny and manifest gave me a cd literally the next day after i freestyled my boy told what me what year that. was this this was 2005 okay i know this sounds crazy so like he 20 said, years ago sounds crazy yeah so we go i'm on the beach i'm super like hype we are we in all black on the beach. Only dudes on <laughs> all black. Yeah. And this dude hands me a CD, and then uh, I I look at it. I'm like, Yo, who made this for you? And he was like, Yo, this kid named Knowledge. He's fine. I'm gonna take you to it. It was like some bronze wine. Shit. Yeah, yo, no, no. Oh. It was some. It the kid's CD sounded a one. Okay. It just sounded so clear. I'm like, Where'd you record this at? And he was like, In some dude's closet. And I was like, What? This shit sound crazy. He's like, like he I'm gonna take studio, you to him. Though. Yeah. So he took me to him, and it ended up being this kid, Knowledge. And back then, he sounded like Jadakiss. Mm. Um, but then, you know, we linked up, and then his boy, DJ Styles from Mass, he told him to do some, like, dance hall shit. Mm. And this is when Auto Tune was first popping off. And uh, he did the dance hall shit, and it started taking off. So, bro, I'm actually on the original version of Husband and Wife, but I got locked up. Mm. They took me off the version, put French Montana, and it blew up. Mm. And uh, I, I can't that get was mad. the Bronx wine type. That shit. was the Bronx wine man, type. Man, niggas shit. don't know about the Bronx wine, Bruh. man. Naya Jewel, <laughs> yeah. all that, man. Dynasty. Shout out, man, shout out Naya Jewel, man. Yeah. She was doing her thing, Dynasty. Yeah. We had that um, Ashley Bautista girl going yep. crazy. Yep. What, yep. man? That was the time. Shout out man. to my dogs, Mike V. Uh, shout out to my dog, Truly Young. Shout out to DJ Styles, DJ Blackout. Bro, oh, yeah. I was locked up for that whole shit. So, so let's, let's rewind a little yeah, bit, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, you started, so that's when you really started, like, 2005, you said, right? That's when I started taking it, like, okay, I could do, I need to do something. Because yeah. trapping ain't going to get me where I need to. And I was a smart dude. Facts. You know what I'm saying? I had played college basketball. I had got a scholarship. Uh, I'm from, I'm, I was born in New York, but I, I went to high school in Tampa. Okay. Played basketball, got a scholarship, made the honor roll. I was, my grandmother never raised me to be, like, some street dude. Yeah. She always taught me to be the opposite. Mm -hmm. You don't have to hustle. You can go out there. Mm -hmm. Um. But then shit just started. I made some bad Especially decisions. Especially you say you're Dominican. I know your you parents ain't know. playing. Yeah. <laughs> I know they not playing, boy. What? Yo, no están relajando conmigo. What? Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> they not playing. <laughs> Yo, bro, for real. Man. She just, she taught me, um, you know, to go hard. But I made some bad decisions, man. Um, chasing after the bitches. Uh, you know Living what I'm saying? Fast. Getting distracted. You know what I'm saying? And then my attitude. Like, I hope I had always felt like... I'm not going to say entitled, but I felt like the world was against me. I felt like, uh, you know, like from the time I was born, I was always fighting for like to prove myself mm -hmm. to myself, to you know, but then also to everybody else. I was the only Chico on a basketball court at times when I came down here to Florida. Uh, we lived in the, in the hood. Right. I ended up getting my girlfriend pregnant while I was in high school. Mm. Ended up living with her. Um, you know, what I'm saying my coach ended up being homeless. She kicks me out in the middle of my junior year. I'm homeless. You know what I'm saying? Playing basketball. Um, just a lot of adversity, dog. And I felt like even after college, like, you know, I had brought her back in, to, you know, whole whole situation, baby mama drama all of a sudden. Yeah. Now it comes crazy. I lose my scholarship. Mm. Um, I lose my license. I go to play ball in DR. I, Damn near hit rock bottom. Yeah, I, I, I've hit rock bottom multiple times. That's the, that's the one thing I want people to know is that, yo, every time it's it feels the same no matter what level you get to. Mm-hmm. It's just how you deal with it. 
You know what I'm saying? Like back then I wasn't dealing, I couldn't, I didn't deal with the adversity well. I would be pissed. I'd be just an angry person. I'd be there um, like negative. You know what I'm saying? Um, as I got older and as I started realizing how you respond to events is probably 80% of the outcome. Mm -hmm. So if it's a negative event, if you respond negatively, it's 100% sure going to be fucked up for you. But if you respond positively, no matter what the event was, you got to water the right seeds. Yeah, you just got to be. It just the, the outcome you want is mm -hmm. uh, is how you how you respond to it. So you know? so you know, of course you know, mama wasn't you know, mama raised you good. You know, you have baby mama stuff. Yeah. Now, what? Now that you said you went to jail and stuff, what what happened there, man? Like, yeah. Uh, so I ended up getting served child support when I came. I was playing professional ball in Dominican Republic. Okay. Right? Me fui para allá Right? I played for, for Plaza. We were trying to get the papers all settled and all these things. And then I took a quick break because I was already out there for 17 months. I came back and my baby mama served me with child support papers. They took my passport. So now the basketball dream is dead. Uh, and not even dead. I had to kind of do that, but then I hurt my knee in a practice. Mm. So now it's dead. Now I didn't want to get surgery. I just felt like, damn, dog. Like, yo, I try to do everything the right way, man. Fuck this shit. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Nah, yeah. I'm gonna go. Ross was out there trapping. Ti was making trap music. Jeezy was big time, and mm -hmm. I was like, fuck it. We about to go get rich or die trying. Mm -hmm. um, went out there, bro. And anything that I put my mind to, dog, I've been successful at. That's bit. That's dead ass. Whether good or bad. Mm -hmm. So I was a successful trapper, dog. And the way they came at me in the court system. They weren't playing with you. That's ass. exactly what not they put me That was at. in Florida? <laughs> yeah, that was here. Oh, yeah, you know them boys not playing. I got jammed up. My barber actually, um, it hasn't been confirmed, but I know he was on paperwork for a lot of people. Uh, he basically made a move, and I told him, don't make the move, because we knew people in Miami. And we found out that the dude that was showing it to him was on, you know, he he was he was talking. He, I, he tried to come to me with it. I'm like, bro, that dude's snitching. Get out. That dude ended up getting caught on camera holding a whole key. And then they picked him up. And, boy, that boy was singing. His wife said it, man. I got these two kids. Da -da -da. This dude is not doing no. And he came for me and a whole bunch of, you know what I'm saying? When they, when they came to pick him up, bro, they shut down a barbershop, bro. People, if you're from Tampa, you know, when they came to end the cut, they came out jumping out of vans, laid the whole barbershop down. So everybody knows what happened. And then little by little, D-Boys in Tampa started falling off. Damn. And I was one of them. I, I, uh, I was pissed at the time, but uh, that shit probably saved my life, bro. I wish Ratchet was here because I'm, 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 he probably heard about all that. He's from here. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. If you they don't know, if yeah. we are Florida podcast, Tampa. Yeah. Off, yeah. <laughs> they don't yeah. know what time it is. Yeah. <laughs> Damn, so how long did you do, bro? Uh, I did three years, thank goodness, man. They were yeah, actually trying to give me 86. That's... They were trying to give me 86. What? Yeah, so what happened was I uh, I had, I had went to Miami because that's where my plugs were, and I was coming back up. Thank goodness I had already got rid of what I was doing. And then um, they pulled me over. They pulled me over twice on I-75. And uh, the first time they let me go, but it was really to get me further down. I had my pistol... I had never got in trouble, so I had a pistol on me just in case. And at um, that time, it wasn't, it wasn't, it was we didn't have the laws that we had now. Nah, right? I mean, it's still, yo. It was still, yeah. It's still, I, you know, my, my pistol was in my name. It was registered. Oh, okay, it's probably okay, okay. easier to get a pistol now than it is no, to get yeah, a that's job. No, yeah, that's what I was saying, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, now yeah. it's so that, easy. Like, when you get pulled over now, that's the first thing to actually, you have yeah. guns. Yeah, and, yeah, man, it was yeah. it's crazy, bro. And, and real talk, they went and, um. They, they searched the vehicle, found what I had left, found my gun, and uh, they were trying to throw the book at me. They, they tried to get my second baby mama to and tell on me. this is after you got out? Yeah, this is before I got out. Uh, this is when I got jammed up the first time. Okay, okay. There was only one time, but there was a second run-in with the police later on. Okay. Um, and that's really where I learned, like, yo, I'm too hot. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> But what, what ended up happening, they found a the pistol, tried to give me a, a whole bunch of time, got... Threw the same charges on my girlfriend at the time, who we ended up finding out she was pregnant when she went in. Um, yeah, it was crazy, bro. So during that time, I, I had to learn about this whole situation. I ended up doing three years because um, I wouldn't cooperate. Uh, and, my, you know, people were like, oh, you're going to get probation. You know, it's, it's not even a lot. Uh, but the prosecution, 
they were not playing games. The DA uh, in Port Charlotte, look, there's a zero drug tolerance out there, and that's that's what ended up happening, man. So my first stint, first time ever being in handcuffs, bro, I ended up going to do state prison time, three years. That's crazy, yep. man. Yep. And then I ended up fighting one of the police inside the prison. What? Yep. I it's just, bro. I just realized, bro. I have this. I have this. And how old were you when you got? You know, twenty one. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was 25. I'm sorry. I'm 20, 25. I, I was 25, 26. I fought it for two years. I tried. I kept extending so, the things. So, and I don't mean to cut you off. So, like, yeah. I'm, I'm, like, trying to think, man, you know, what were your thoughts, you know, being in there? Like, a year in, a year and a half in, Shit. knowing, you you know, you got your, your, your kids out. Day one. You know, day one was the toughest. Day did it, one. Did it make you put your foot on the gas more with this music? Yeah, yeah. So look, the crazy thing was I was already kind of blowing up. Getting there. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I had got a deal uh with Adam Tenster. He's actually a Grammy nominated uh he, uh, uh he got a European Grammy. We started our, we was the hottest thing in Europe. Their label That's crazy. gave me a record deal 3 days after I got arrested. Wow. Yeah. It's like it's like things but maybe it was like a sign like you're not ready for this right now. Po- and possibly, dog. And so it was crazy because I had records with crazy people. I did shit with DJ Smalls. DJ Smalls came to my hood and recorded me um, for DJ Smalls stuff. And then, like, all that shit stopped. My boy ends up doing a song with French. My manager ends up helping French. They got platinum plaques, all types of shit. But I'm in jail. So I learned life goes on. Everybody pretty much forgot about me, bro. Mm-hmm. And um, and that's how that shit is. That's how it is. Life And, bro. And make you realize. Yeah, mm-hmm. life ain't going to stop. Mm-hmm. And and uh, that's that's really where I learned. Like, yo, I got, I wanted to put my gas, my foot on the gas. I was the car wasn't moving though. Mm. And I it be out. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, what can you say for the people that feel like that? Like, you know, like, damn, I got my foot on the gas, but the car ain't moving, nigga. Nothing's happening. Like, yeah. What what got you through that? If you want to use the same car principles, bro, you probably got there's something wrong with the engine. You probably got the oil where the gas supposed to be, and you need to check it out. You got to do something different. Yeah. And um, I had to go under the hood, bro, right here, and kind of realize, like, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. And uh, I realized that I was, I had put all my eggs in this rapping shit, but what I was using to finance this shit was this drug money. That shit is it's not dirty money. It's not a f- viable plan. Like, it's not sustainable. It's not long term. And I lost. And then later on, bro, when I got out, the first thing I needed to do was go get a job. I try, I needed to turn my life around, bro, because mm-hmm. when I was in there, bro, they put me in CM. I ended up being on the show locked up while I was in prison. Yeah, the ex- Santa Rosa Extended Stay, locked up. You what? can see it. Episode one. <laughs> Episode yeah, one. Yeah, like, yo. That's crazy. Bro, it was nuts, man. I ended up fighting a police officer. He ends up choking me. I, we end up fighting. Bro, they wrote 44 grievances against the police officer saying that they still sent my ass all the way up the road. I was in locked up. I was in, uh, <sighs> I went from community custody, which means like work, work release, to heightened security level four. Like, I could only shout three times a week. We were on 24-hour lockdown. I got 45 minutes every three days to be able to go outside in a dog pen, bro, and do some pull-ups. What? I knew at that point, dog, that they got some place for motherfuckers that really think that they, you know, yeah. they it. And um, one of the sergeants came around, and he told me, he was like, Serrano, man, what are you here for, dog? Like, And I was like, I'm here because you see it. It's on my paper. That's outside this door, sergeant. He was like, no, no, no. This dude, this dude murdered four people your bunky he's a killer like the other dude he's a rapist you know what i'm saying you you not like this i was mm-hmm. like well sars give me some advice man what would you say he's like get the fuck out of florida that's what he told me because they come in once you once you pin once you in that system they 77 percent of us go back bro when i left they let me out on april fool's day I thought that they was playing a joke when they came in there at 4.45 in the morning. No lie. And when I left, they were like, we're going to leave the lights on for you. Because <laughs> they just knew I was going back. And right there, I just, I, I had to put it in my head that I wasn't doing that. So I went to go get a job. They fired me, bro. I, I was actually doing real good. They fired me three months after they found out about my record. Wow. The managers told me to stay and work under somebody else's name. 
And I was doing that, but then something happened with the money. So I was like, fuck that shit. I'm going right to what I know how to do. Mm -hmm. So I, I went, I started doing weed. Mm -hmm. I was like, yo, weed, if I'm going to go, I'm not going to go for nothing crazy. Yeah. Started pushing pounds. I just made a call to my plug. He had 100 pounds in my doorstep the next day because mm -hmm. I kept it 100 while I was there. Bro, I started doing that. That shit ended up getting just as big as the dope. And then, dog, I ended up losing something. And put the, I had another run in with the police with Border Patrol. Mm. And, uh, you know, I, I thought about it, man. I'm about to go in again. Cause I had 25 pounds in my trunk. They did a whole VH1 documentary on this. My yeah. True Crime Story, Season 1, Episode 3. Um, <sighs> Remy Ma, actually, uh, she narrated it. And wow. uh, go watch that, man. It'll tell you about the whole story. Long story short, man, I thought I was going back in. You know, I told myself that only God could get me out because they got me dead to rights. I got 25 pounds. I came right out of Needles, California. I was in Sacramento grabbing my <sighs> shit for my people. And... uh one exit out, they border patrol pulled me over. I knew what time it was. They got behind me. They asked to search the vehicle. Luckily, I had my phone on, and my girlfriend at the time recorded the whole fucking conversation. And I kept the phone. I put the phone in a Carl's Jr. box, right? Because that's a, it's a Hardee's, but out there. And I put it in the center console, bro. And they went into the trunk first, which they're not supposed to do. Then they talked about it all crazy. Bro, I'm not going to lie. This phone saved my life, and the person on the other end saved my life because she didn't have to stay on there that long. Mm -hmm. They ended up finding the phone an hour later, bro, and then they all she heard was, oh, shit, and they hung up the phone. Long story short, bro, they let me go, but they took all my work, and I had put everything into those elbows. Damn. So it was like they got me. But I, I didn't give a fuck, man. I wanted to. You were blessed. Yeah, blessed. You were blessed. Absolutely. You were blessed. And so from that point in time, I knew I had to change my life because, bro, I couldn't even walk into a Walmart on Del Mabry and Waters without a motherfucker being like, "Hunt, you ain't online, hunt. Vince, come on, man. Mm -hmm. The streets need you, bro. And I just knew, like, yo, they That's didn't. That's that spot, too. I used to live on Waters in, um, Waters in Armenia. Oh, yeah. you Carlisle? <laughs> is that where you was at? I was the at apartments? the park on Waters. Yeah. 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 There you right go. There. Park. Yeah, park. Yeah. Yo, that used to be called park Carlisle back in the day. But yeah. Yeah, I think so. Park, yeah, yeah, yeah. Park Plate. Yeah, bro. But it's right next to the, um, the little plaza right there. Yeah. Next to the Popeyes. Yeah. Right there. Popeyes. Yeah, that used to be when Dixie. There was a whole, bro. They still got the Win Dixie there. Yeah, bro. Yeah. I used to run. There was a Bruno's Pizza there, bro. We used to hit that bitch every day, dog. I think they made it Marco's Pizza now. Yeah, man. bro. It's crazy, bro. That's how you know you from Tampa when you nah, see all this real. shit. That and I'm not even West from Tampa. here, but like, that was like my first apartment. So yeah. it's like I got to see like the raw Tampa, like, Bro, what it was, yeah, like, you, you know, like three, four years ago. So I got to see, like, you know, it's okay, changing. This you see Tampa. how fast it's changing, too? bro. I've only been here three years, and this shit is is completely different. And the fucking rent going crazy, yeah, boy. Yeah. Let me tell you, bro. I was paying eleven hundred when I first moved down here for a two bedroom, two bathroom at that spot. Yeah, eleven hundred, bro. Yeah, you you was winning. You are not getting that right no, now. It's like eighteen hundred right now for you the studio. Are not it's that. crazy to see how we're turning into like the next New York, the next yeah, Cali, the next, the next Miami. Yeah, like, the next Miami. You know? And it's dope if you've been here because when I first got here, bro, I got here when I was fourteen. I figured like I was like, why is this place not like San Francisco or L.A.? Now it's turning into that shit, bro. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm from the area where Armature Works with downtown. Um, Tampa Heights. I didn't even know I was from Tampa Heights, dog. Like, my, I knew when one of my dogs love it from Tampa Heights was like, "Yo, we finna go fight Rose." I'm like, <laughs> I'm like "We finna go fight Rose." Yeah, like, <laughs> Rose, what? He was like, you from Tampa Heights? Don't be hollering. That. <laughs> yeah, so that's what I learned where I was from. Yeah. Now they got back in the day, bro. Like, you wasn't walking through the hood. I'm from Columbus and Central. You was not walking through that area, dog. Like, like it was nothing. I slept on a park bench through there. That YMCA on Palm. I. Wax the floors before school. Bro, that shit, they turned that shit into armature works. They put a sprouts and fucking yeah, that yeah, shit yeah. is lit. That shit you lit can't right touch now, yeah. nothing in there for nope. less than a mil right now. Mm -hmm. I'm a little, I'm a little uh upset because of the way, you know, you see gentrification. gentrification. We all and not during from that, New York, so I you know this shit is crazy. The crazy part about it is is that Everybody back in the day was like, yo, you rich when you get money, you sell your house and you move to Brandon or you move to Riverview. So that's what everybody did when we all had properties in downtown. Mm -hmm. And so we kind of, they kind of got the wool over our eyes, bro. They got the whole hood out, went to Brandon, Carrollwood, all these other places because mm -hmm. you thought that's where the money went. And it was really where we were at the whole time. Yeah. So shout out to the people who still own property, don't sell it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We still got to keep our communities, you know, A1 and and own that shit, you yeah. know? 
So, you know, my next question for you, you know, after all these trials and tribulations you went through and yeah. stuff, you know, I seen you went billboard, yeah. you know, iTunes, everything, you know, the shows on TV, everything, you know, yeah. like, where did this come from? Like, you just went, like, what happened? Like, I yeah. know you went through all this shit and, you know, but what was the first thing that broke that, you know, wall for you? Bro, I felt like I was... With music. I felt like I was always destined to be successful and then always destined to be successful in music. When I was in, when I got out, I was close, dog. They offered me that deal. So I knew I was touching you knew it. it. Yeah. They end up sending me my mixtape covers when I'm locked up to keep my head like, don't forget you still got people who love you. Mm-hmm. Bro, I got a song with Sean Kingston. Yeah, it's called, what? yo, bro, it's called, uh, damn, Chevy Riding High. Um, I'm a rider. It's called I'm a rider. I got songs with, I got a record. Bro, shout out to Bottom Feeder, man. He used to send me these records before they come out. I was right there, bro. <laughs> Envy yeah. called us and was like, yo. DJ Envy? Yeah, because yeah. we took a verse that Fab did with some cats from Chicago. Mm. He used to blast out the records, but he would send them to me, and I'd do freestyles with them, and he'd blast them out. Wow. And they people used to think it was our records. Mm-hmm. So I got... I got records that people thought they were spinning in the club. They talked Fabulous on an interview, and he was like, yo, you just did this rec- record called Bad Man with Hunt. And Fabulous is looking like, who the fuck? Who, what? <laughs> and so Envy called us, was like, look, the marketing's crazy. You got to stop, though, because these people are calling up Fab, like, yo, mm-hmm. what are you doing? Long story short, bro, I knew I was there. I didn't fall off while I was inside there. I was making records. I was writing. I was doing all this shit. And dog, when they went in to do Locked Up, now mind you dog, when I was in the joint bro, nobody liked my shit. Mm -hmm. Nobody was fucking with my shit. Like Mm -hmm. in the joint. They was fucking with plies. They was fucking with, you know what I'm saying? All that shit. They Mm -hmm. was not fucking with my shit. And I was rapping about how when I get out, I'm gonna change my life and how I'm gonna get this shit going. Wasn't till Locked Up actually came in there, bro. They were out there in the bullpen, bro. And dog, my boy Saint hit me in the chest. Was like, see that hundred grand that you do? See that shit right now, bro. <laughs> and I, I didn't want to do. It. I was kind of tight scared. He was yeah. like, man, you better do this shit. This is your chance. Yeah, no lie, bro. They had the cameras on. And I was like, if I had, if I had a hundred grand, yeah. Lord, that's all I do for one good chance. If I don't blow, then I'll be damned. If I had, if I had a hundred grand, Lord, I might go off the deep end and go blow it all this weekend. So as soon as them cameras hit you, you just went, went you just off. Did it. Bro, <laughs> they put that shit, that shit aired four days after I got out of prison. What? That shit went on TV, MSNBC, four days when I went out of prison. What? Matter of fact, Blue 44 made me sign away the rights to the record while I was in jail, because technically you can't make money when you in jail. So they wasn't going to let me collect the publishing from that shit. Mm. Still a little be my case going on right now about that shit. I was going to say, yeah, that... Bro, it's crazy. Yo. It's crazy, man. That rec- that shit got played. I saw that shit on TV the other day. <laughs> like, it's kind of crazy, <laughs> That's man. That's crazy. So what, uh, to get back to your question, man, what made me know... I knew from that point, bro, that I was there. I just needed to keep going. Manifest. Don't quit. Keep going. Manifest. Didn't matter. As long as I don't quit. Doesn't matter when you do it. As long as you do it, bro. And you I- don't try. You do it. Please talk. say that one more you time. You don't try. You do it. There is no try. Like when people, I tell everyone around me, how did I not all day today, bro? Like when people say try, I say, bro, p- like just please work on not using that word because our words are powerful, They're bro. they spells. Like literally, like very powerful. And like I can honestly say, you know, and I know you can too, you know, I've manifested everything I did. So it's like... We don't try. We do things. You got to tell them, bro. When I tell people that, sometimes they look at me kind of like, man, what the fuck is you talking about? Yeah. And I'm not going to lie to you, bro. And this is this is no show. The moment I started being certain about my life. Everything started happening. That's how it is. I wrote on a vision board that we was going to get a billboard. That shit happened a year later. Mm-hmm. I wrote that we was going to have matching cars, me and my wife. That shit happened mm-hmm. like a year later. Even the house that we you put on there. You were going to change your life. Bro, and, but, that shit and it happened. happened. I know I'm going to be successful in this music shit. Mm-hmm. It's happening. Mm-hmm. And that's the part where 
like when you tell people like, yo, I'm going to try, that means there's a chance you're not going to do it. Exactly. And you can't have that mindset. You got to go in the mindset like, yeah, I'm going to do it. And if I fail, I'm going to get right back there up. There is no fail. And there is no failing. As long as I don't quit. Exactly. These are all lessons. Exactly. Everything's, no lo- losses, everything's a lesson. I'm glad that you said that, bro, because I'm telling you, man, sometimes I tell people, I'm like, don't say try. And they're like. I tell people that every day. Yeah. Like, that's that's my, like, literally one of my goals that I have to do every day is tell someone don't use the word try. Like, everyone around me knows it. Like, <laughs> everyone around me, they're like. Oh, and if they'll catch me saying it, like, hold on. Yeah, like, don't do that. Because I even say it sometimes. I'm like, yeah. oh, man, I can't be saying that. I catch myself when I do it. I'm like, I'm not going to try. I'm going to do yeah, it. Yeah, I'm going to do know that know shit. Man? Or I'm going to work on it. Yeah, like, I'm working know, on it. Exactly. Working on it. Like, just, you know, take that out your voc- vocabulary. Everybody take that Everybody, out. Everybody, <laughs> please. So um, the billboard, man, how did that come about? Man, shout out to Shane Foster and Davis Chris. Um, I, I paid to have one of my records, the answer that I did with Couture, uh, in like this DJ pool review thing. Mm. And they heard the record and, uh, I was rapping in Spanish. It was actually the first record that I decided, you know what? I don't care if my Spanish is trash. I'm going to rap in man, Spanish. Yeah, 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 yellow Come sour, on, bro. Man. But yo aprendí, I learned when I was yeah. 14. So I had this accent, right? Cause I'm American. Mm-hmm. So, but I was like, fuck that. I'm going to be me. 100%. So I rap. So they heard the record. And they're like, yo, you rap in Spanish? I was like, yeah. They were like, yo, we need somebody Latino on this record. It was called Cha Cha. Mm. So they were like, yo, boom, get on there. Bro, remember I told, had that vision board? I you had, said you were going to go billboard. The next, like, two weeks, bro, that shit happened. It just manifested itself. Mm-hmm. And dog, like, he, they gave me an opportunity. He was like, can you get the record done in 24 hours? I was like, yeah, but everybody says that shit. Mm-hmm. They be talking shit. Yeah. So he hits me up 24 hours later like, yo, I'm waiting for the record. Is it done? Is it done? I'm like, yo, I'm in a studio right now. Luckily, I have a studio in my crib, and my boy Couture is an engineer. Mm-hmm. So I record the record. The beat that he sent me isn't even the—I like the way they did it. The beat that they sent, me, they sent me to do it wasn't even the beat that they put it on. They put it on something different. Mm. They sped my vocals up. That shit end up they charting. They that bitch up. Bro, that shit end up charting on iTunes, and then it charted on Billboard. And the crazy thing about it was the day that it charted and went on Billboards, I was shooting the My True Crime story right here in Largo, bro, for the uh, VH1 shit. And, bro, I was able to show the people, like, yo, my shit is number four. Man, I got to you on that one, bro. I got to you That on shit was better. Man. Yo, better. It was crazy, Manifestation, bro. bro. It was crazy, dog. Billboard gang. Bro, out <laughs> here. And, 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 dog, so shout out to Shane Foster, Davis, Chris. They gave me the opportunity. That was dope. But I want to I wanna say that that's not the end. That's just the oh beginning. yeah. That's just these are these are trophies, these, right? They're like little just to remind you. It, it, you did it, it to be real with you. I appreciate it. I got that shit hanging up in my studio, but that shit don't mean it shit. don't. And I tell people that all the time because like, like even with mine's like, I still don't even. It hasn't even hit me still. Yeah, like you know, people work their whole life to get on Billboard and do stuff like that. Yeah, and, you know, sometimes it still hasn't even hit me. If that's your goal, you in trouble. Mm-hmm. Cause that's not really. It's that's not. But that's because all. I see more. Yeah, and like, I, and and it's really all um, vanity metrics. Mm-hmm. It's really all like the real numbers is in the paychecks. Mm-hmm. The real numbers is yeah. in the money. Mm-hmm. The real mo- The real numbers is when you grow mm-hmm. and your fan base. People think like you know you billboard you're out of here you made it. Like no, I try to yo. And I'm going to say this. I don't think I've ever said this on camera, you know. But And you know this is the reality of the music mm-hmm. and the music business. But, like, for example, you know, the song I went Billboard for, you know, we got paid 2000 for the beat. Yep. 50% goes to the other producer. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> so I got $1,000. Yep. 20% goes to my manager. Mm. So I got $800. The plaques, you know how them bitches. Yeah, they 500 they by like, themselves. <laughs> they the jewel, jewel Boy, The case. ones I got, I got for, like, 380. Good job. So, still. But I had 800, <laughs> so 380 times two. Yeah, you have 420 right there. I had what, like $40 left? Oh, yeah, you had two. Yeah, you out of there. Yeah, yeah. I, we had the iTunes and the mm. and the billboard. So, you know, that's not the end. Like, you know, like we still trying to, we're not trying. Yeah. We're still working on more. Like, you should always want more. Legit. You know, you get a billboard, you, you use that, that's your trophy. 
But okay, we want diamond now. We want number yeah, ones. Ace. We That's want. What we, said. we want gold. We, we want need, all of it. We need Platinum, all of that. Everything. You need multiple ones, man. Mm-hmm. You need multiple. And like you ones. said, them. It's it's them checks that's gonna speak for them. I, right. my, one of the goals is to have a billboard or a charting record, a number one record in English and in Spanish mm-hmm. at the same time. Oof. That's the that's the ne- that's the real goal for mm-hmm. me to do that at the same time. And then that's not the only goal. There's more. Like I want platinum records. I want you know what I'm saying like real talk. I want to get to the point where we are feeding communities off this shit, bro. Mm-hmm. Because I I have and it's possible. It. Bro, it's very possible. I, I've done it in different shit. Mm-hmm. I've done it in, uh, and, and we talked about Youngest in the Yacht Club, my label, bro, how that thing came up. We was in rooms we wasn't even supposed to be in. That's how mm-hmm. it came up. Mm-hmm. Because, yo, I'm a felon, dog. I did three years prison. I got tattoos. I'm Latino with dreads. Like, yo, I don't want to hear it. I was on TV. I was on TV while I was mm-hmm. locked up for my music. I was, this shit, if, we getting in these rooms that these people look at us and they're like, who are these people? And at the beginning, it's kind of like, hold on. But then when they, at, when they get to know you, they're like, man, they see some of you in, in them. them. Mm-hmm. And that, that makes them want to help you even more. And that's mm-hmm. the, that's the real reason because dog with the money, we talked about the community, Tampa Heights, how it grew up. Like, bro, I want to own some of these blocks. You know, I have a friend whose stepdad, he owns a hundred properties in Tampa. He owns like seven blocks of Tampa. Mm. That's that's mm-hmm. real change. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's real ownership. That's real residuals, real yeah. residuals. It's just you're able, bro. I, the the goal is to have Hillsborough Avenue, say Vince Serrano Boulevard. Mm-hmm. That's I want a street named after me, bro. Yeah. And and that's the type of shit that we talking you're gonna about. Gonna do it. We getting that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we on it right now. We doing it. That's dope. So like you know, you you talked about the the yacht club thing. Um. How did that come about? You know, you got your own podcast. You know, you said it's a label. Yeah. Yep. Um, how did that, where did that come to fru- fruition? Yeah, Youngest in the Yacht Club, we talked about it. I ended up moving to New York, and I had to move to a place where the only people that knew me was close family because it was too easy for me to get a pack. And in New York, I didn't know anybody. And so, and I ain't going to lie. You know, we, they move different up there. They do. And, bro, I ain't going to lie. I got a pack shipped to me because I ain't know nobody. I had to send it back. Thank goodness. You know what I'm saying? Why'd you say I had to send it back? Because I ain't know nobody. Okay, okay. <laughs> like, Hold on, okay. I ain't know nobody. I'm not, and in New York, they moved different. You know so, say, that's, damn, you had to send that shit back. I sent it back. My plug was like, damn, Vince, like you. But that's, that's respect though. Like you, other, other people would have ran off or like took I need, too long and you kept it real. My, my people's, my people's kept it real. They took my son, uh, to build a bear for his birthday while I was locked up. Three years. You know so what I'm saying? That's the least you could do is keep it real. At the least. At the I, least. I, I, I didn't tell. They took care of me, man. I took full responsibility, and they took full responsibility. So the that's opportunity, real. I've never tried to burn uh, any type of bridges, not even with creditors, none of that. Like, shit's crazy, bro. I just feel like my face got to stay gator, bro. Mm-hmm. You know? And so you have to. long story short, bro, I needed to learn how to, se- I needed to, learn how to sell something else. So I learned how to sell solar. During that time, I could sell anything. So I just needed something that I believed in. I believed in it. We started making money. I made six figures the first year at, and eight months sleeping in the office. So four months changed my whole pay scale. Mm-hmm. I made, in those four months, 100K. We started getting invited, and my boy started taking me into these places with these folks. In them rooms. In them rooms mm-hmm. and going to the Hamptons. And going to the Hamptons, man, we was in the yacht club with these people who was like white hair, white skin, like with the elites. With the elites. <laughs> and they looking at us like, yo, who is this guy? And who is this, this guy? Spanish dude with dress. Legit, man. I had a shorter haircut and Chat stuff, but legit, you can't hide who you are. Yeah. I, but I never did. And that's the part that they, they actually respected that more because I was being myself mm-hmm. and I was changing my life. And some of them came from those kind of Backgrounds. Uh, backgrounds and mm-hmm. upbringings. And so they wanted to help me even more. And so while we was in there, I made a song called Sheesh. And uh, in the club, was like, yo, members of the Yacht Club, and we be the youngest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Youngest and that the Youngest in the Yacht Club. And uh, that's where it came from. When I moved back down, I wanted to start my own business. Um, I didn't want to pay New York City prices. So I, me and my, you know, we came down here, bought a, a, a home, uh office, 
invested in my business, every dollar into my business. Um, and then when I decided to take music super seriously because I, I didn't feel like I was being accomplished, like I felt like I was leaving one of my goals on the table. Um, and I didn't want to be 60, 70, 80 years old and look at myself back in the day and think that I, I, I didn't make it. Mm -hmm. um, I went, we created Youngest in the Yacht Club. Mm. And uh, we, we started it off as a clothing company first. Uh, but then all of a sudden it's, we got, uh, we got into a building with a podcast studio on it. And, uh, I just recorded my, my partner for the first time. We just started with the phone, bro. And then fucking, it, I love doing it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, this shit is fire. And like, I'm a dope rapper, whatever. I got bars, but I also feel like being able to tell the story and had a conversation that's what people needed to connect to because people can relate. They could relate. They, they, feel could, it. they could get to know us mm -hmm. and know the, the story. And that's what I think the podcast and things open up the doors for. Then I could put my music in the background, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Kind of like real get marketing lit. and, yeah. you know, and integrating everything. It opened up those doors, bro. So the label, the podcast, but most importantly, the lifestyle, because that's, we wanted to show, like, I had a, with Knowledge and then we was the click clack team. Like, we was gun toting, we was, <laughs> yo, know, I told Knowledge, yo, hold this. <laughs> if anything happened, let off, nah, right? Is it. That, that type of shit. But I didn't want to, I didn't want that, I didn't want that being my legacy. Mm -hmm. I needed something that was going to take me to the top, top tier, high caliber. And so Youngest in the Yacht Club was it, man. That's dope, man. So how how long have you been doing the podcast? So we've been doing the podcast. It's a year in March. I was going to say, because I just started seeing it on my, like, yeah. yo, I've been seeing yeah. it, okay. We were nominated for Best in the Bay. We didn't get it, but we uh, there was another show that has a TV podcast, and they got it, but we got nominated. Um, you know, there's we've had great guests. We've had some of those guests, you know, I played basketball with. Some mm -hmm. of those guests in the NBA, some of those guests that, you know, we're, we're about to have some bigger names on there just because we're not quitting. Because... Mm -hmm. And you're yep. not trying either. You're not trying. We're doing, doing it. it. <laughs> not doing it. And people going to see that. Yes, sir. People going to see that, man. Yes, I'm excited sir. to get on there, man, and fuck with y'all. Yeah, you already know, real. man. We appreciate we that. We're going to have some great conversations. Absolutely, man. bro. I'm going to bring you into my music world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got to. We got to work, <laughs> too, man. Yeah, bro. Definitely. And, you know, we can get in whenever, bro. Like, you know, even on, whenever you're free, bro, just yeah. hit me. Yo, bro, you got anything going today? I'm in the let's city. Rock. Let's run it. I like, see you moving too. Right, let's I see do it, you bro. moving, dog. Well, you know, hey, you had we had the music conference. That's really where also I knew. Yeah. We did the Youngest City Yacht Club music conference. Um, because Strizzo came and was he was the third guest on the on the podcast. Strizzo from out here. Um, you know, he's got a top 40 record for Bustle Wide Open with Lil' Key. Mm. He's a Tampa legend. He came to my podcast. He actually let me perform during COVID. He was like, I fuck with your music. When he came to the spot, he's like, yo, you should do a conference. Youngest in the Yacht Club is dope. Mm. We did a music conference, and not knowing, we had your manager, Jerome, on there talking <laughs> about the paperwork. Yeah. Bro, there was so much game. We had TJ's, DJ's out there. He's we the had truth, so much, bro, all types of people. Yo, Shizum, Buckwheat, uh, Babs, everybody who was doing anything, Headbuster. Pharaoh and them. All there, them, yeah. bro. They came through. Knowledge was there. Everybody. And then, dog, like, we had a panelist, and we were just giving so much game. And mm -hmm. that's how I and knew. And that's what this is about, too. Yeah, man. It's no dope, cap. man. Like, but you you said that's how you knew what? That's how we knew. We learned there were so many James. That, I knew that's how, like, so we had promoted it maybe for a month or two, 30 days. And, like, 200 people showed up mm. because they wasn't doing the music conferences. The, the old Benton Records, the Tampa Music Conference, that's what they did at Benton Records back in the day. They hadn't had it since COVID and even before that. So we was the first music conference in Florida, Youngest in the Yacht Club. And, yo, we had it in the Renaissance Hotel. That shit was dope. Hmm. It was some Yacht Club high caliber shit. People was getting, like, it was, it was dope. And yeah. they were like, yo, this is like, this, this ain't the Benton Records go through mm -hmm. the record shop. This is like some high level shit. Mm -hmm. uh, it was an international, you know what I'm saying, at the Renaissance Hotel. So it was super dope. And uh, people came through and they were like, yo, you got to do this every year. This music conference, so much game. They could network mm -hmm. with the people from the radio. We networked and I got so much game, mm -hmm. you know, and that's how I knew like, yo, we on the right path. That's dope, bro. That's dope. So what's next for you? Like music wise, what's coming out for you next? You got any songs coming out? Absolutely. Any videos? What's going on? Bro, I'm glad that you talked about that, dog, because uh, I got my record right now, Eaton. Mm. Uh, it is out 
right now. Go stream that. Eaten by Vince Serrano. What's the vibe on that one? Yo, that's some youngest in the yacht club. We literally shot the mic talk. Like everybody's doing mic talks in the hood, and I fucks with it. Yeah. We we're thinking about doing one in the hood. That'd be fire. Okay, but nah. nah, we went we went downtown where the yachts are, and yeah. we shot that. Make, yeah, that makes sense. Yachts. Yeah, yeah. Youngest City Yacht Club. It turned out to be a movie. The video's out yet? It's yeah, it's out. Okay. Eating the mic talk. Okay. Um, and and we love that. And then we putting out uh, my EP is gonna be called My True Crime Story. <laughs> um, it's dope. <laughs> I wanted yeah. people to tell people exactly where it was from, mm-hmm. kind of learn the background. And then uh, on that record, we got our next single coming out called We Outside, mm. featuring Knowledge. Um, okay. It's it's dope. It basically tells the story of, like, you know, when, when, when they were blowing up, bro, I was locked up. I didn't get the experience, none of that. So now when I come out, I'm pushing my name out there. Mm-hmm. And um, now that we got this life, I'm a little bit older. I'm married. I got things, and it's like... Yo, I'm outside, and this life, this life ain't easy. Mm-hmm. Life is lifing. Life be lifing, but even the life of an entertainer, bro. Like, you get out there, and then all of a sudden, you got these women that see you. It's crazy when I'm mm-hmm. singing the song called "Try to Tell Y'all That Bronx Wine mm-hmm. with Knowledge," and I was locked up when it came out. It was one of the hottest songs during that time in dance hall, bro. I seen the verse, and people are singing it with me, not knowing that that's me. Mm-hmm. So now they're putting two and two together, and re- I can see it in their face. Oh shit, that's Hunt. He's the dude that's wrapped the video. Like he's the dude that's it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's him, and they know the words. And they singing it. And they singing it. And then they're like, "That's him, yeah, yeah right." Because I was locked up. <laughs> that's hard. Yeah, and so it tells that story. But now those people are like, "You guys are legends. You were it. You this. You that." But I'm like, "Yo, my chill, I'm like Mary." Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they want to they wanna spend, they want to be chilling, they want to be, and I can't really rock like that. The life, I can't live that life. So it's almost like I want it, but I, I got to be careful about where I'm going with it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm move righteous. I'm, exactly, bro. And I feel like that's what got me here. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Be me, be 100. You know what I'm saying? I'm switch it up. That's it. Mm-hmm. That's fire, bro. So I'm eating, and then we outside. Hell yeah, bro. And you know we got to get it in, too. Yes, we gonna sir. Work up. We're going to get one in. Let's do it. Um, so what's some advice, you know, before we before we get out of here, man? What's some advice you could give to some artists, you know, that might that was in your position or might have got locked up and, you know. Yeah. You know, they trying. We don't, you know, we don't use the word try, yeah. but people trying, you know, to get out of that, you know. What's yeah. some advice you could give them? Man, Zay, um, I feel like it's super important to understand, man, that you got to want it. Like you want to eat in the morning Like you gotta want it And not quit Like you're not gonna quit on yourself right You can't quit on yourself You can't quit eating or else you're gonna die mm-hmm. You gotta want this hunger like that Like it's just as bad as you wanna breathe mm-hmm. And You only fail if you quit mm-hmm. If you quit You are guaranteed failure But if you keep going Right You're guaranteed success Mm-hmm it may not be what you thought it was going to be. It may be more than that. Because that's, I've got the places I'm like, damn, bitch, I didn't think big enough. Mm-hmm. Yo, you, you got to think big. Don't quit till you get there. And then when you hit those goals, yo, go on right to the next one. Mm-hmm. It don't stop. It don't. Because you realize that shit really wasn't shit. Mm-hmm. It was not It was shit because you was, you was in that position, a lower position. Yeah. And now you see some shit and you realize, like, okay, this ain't even... That wasn't even got, hard. Yeah, like, what the hell? I got it. <laughs> if I could do this, what? What else could I do? Exactly. And, and, dog, don't give yourself no excuses because, look, I tell you, man, I'm Chico with dreads, tats, facial hair, like, yo, and I was making shit happen left and right. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So don't quit. Keep going. It's not about... Uh, when you get it done, you know what I'm saying? It's about getting it done. Mm-hmm. It don't matter how you get it done, when just, you did, just get, get it, done. it done. No cap. So my last question is, I know you said you wanted to, you know, own blocks and stuff and yeah. have your name on a, on a block and stuff. Yeah. What's something besides that that you would do for your city when this shit popped the way you want it to pop? Oh, man. Yo, it's, I, I want to say it's not just my city. It's my culture. Mm. Like, me being Chico from Tampa during the time, I was the only Chico in prison rapping like I was rapping. Claro. I was the only Chico um, 
on the basketball courts at times. You know what I'm saying? I was the only Chico on certain things. So putting on for our culture and letting people know, like, bro, I'm an American. I'm a Latin American, but I'm American Latin, mm-hmm. Latino, you know? Um, we are dope, too. You know what I'm saying? Because at times, man, I felt like I wasn't white enough for the for the white we folks. We get put on a pedestal. Well, we I wasn't I wasn't white enough for white folks, and I wasn't black enough for black folks. Man, there's this bar. <laughs> there's this bar. Um, I don't know if you know who Earl Sweatshirt. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Bro, there's yeah. this bar where he said, "I was too black for the white." He literally said what you said. Yeah. I was too black for the white kids, and too he said too black for the white kids, and too white for the black. Like, yeah, literally, like he said some shit like that. That. Like yeah, said. And, and and so really, I just I want to show people that, you know, I was homeless at one time during high school, mm-hmm. and I'm I got a scholarship. That was my goal. And I want to tell people like, yo, like there's a there's a there's a place that helped me out called the Skill Center. They they actually got me a place to stay at. Like I want to give back to my community by offering, uh, you know, affordable housing. I want to, of course, yeah, we just, we're not a charity. We're doing it to you know for appreciation and power. But like, bro, I want to change some of the some of the uh, reforms and some of the policies that we have here. Um, I'm not an idiot. You know what I'm saying? I come from that. Like, you see how Wallow is doing it from a million dollars worth mm-hmm. of game. And, you know, you see Meek Mill and all these people. Like, that's that's the type of shit I want to be on. I want to I teach. I want to go through our, our schools, our high schools around the area and let them know, like, yo, don't worry about it. You could come from a family like that. You you know, things could happen. Mm-hmm. You It doesn't define you. Don't be a prisoner of your past. Be the architect of your future, bro. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that's, Say that one more time, bro. Yeah, don't be a prisoner of your past. Be the architect for your future. Mm. And and legit, bro, that's the realest thing. Like, you got to sacrifice who you are today for who you want to be, but know who you want to be. Mm-hmm. That's hard, bro. That's hard, man. Bars, dog. I appreciate He said bars, <laughs> dog. Hey, man, I appreciate you pulling up on me today, appreciate bro. No you, cap. Yeah. But, you know, we're not done. Yes, sir. I heard you got a little performance that you finna rock out for yeah. us, man. Yeah, yeah. All right, bet. Eating, let's run man. it, man. Ian, yeah. let's get it. Zay Cartier, man. In the studio, presented by Mix One Essentials. Let's go.